NASCAR fans, in my opinion, are the most passionate fans in all of sports. They'll root for their driver and love their driver to the ends of the world. But at other instances, those passions go completely in the wrong way. And while I don't think this is the norm for everybody, there are a lot of drivers in NASCAR nowadays, especially because of their upbringing, that get tons and tons of hate. And I think that there is one driver who has just been completely overhated the last couple years. He's not going to set the world on fire, but he's not going to also torpedo a season. I've seen descriptors for him be stuff like spoon-fed, grandpa's boy, doesn't deserve the number he's in, hasn't worked for any of it, isn't a good driver whatsoever. And that driver that they're talking about is Austin Dillon. And in my opinion, I think Austin Dillon is NASCAR's most overhated driver. He's a driver that, like I've said, is not going to set the world on fire, but he doesn't torpedo a team. I think that he's the most underappreciated driver as well in the Cup Series today, as with the equipment he's been given, I think that he's honestly done a pretty good job. So let's look back a bit at the career of Austin Dillon, as well as some of the descriptors or big criticisms of him. Starting off, let's look at the fact that Austin Dillon has made the playoffs in five of the last seven seasons. These seasons being 2016, 17, 18, as well as 2020, and this past year in 2022. Now, how did he get in to all of those different playoffs? How did he qualify? Well, in 2016, he was consistently a guy in the top 10 to 12 in points. He was somebody who was up there with drivers at the time, like Ryan Newman and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Not bad drivers whatsoever. And he was able to get in, and while he has never really made any real ground up in the playoffs, still a pretty good accomplishment. The other four seasons, all wins. He is a multi-time winner, so it's not like he's just completely been a bust and not accomplished anything in his career. When you look at these wins too, some of them are in the biggest races and in a lot of ways in one, very clutch moments. Starting off in 2017, his first win was a fuel mileage race, but it wasn't just any fuel mileage race. Instead, it was the Coca-Cola 600. He managed to win the longest race off fuel mileage, meaning that he had to at least stay on the lead lap through the end of that race because in order to be in it through a fuel mileage race, you got to be on the lead lap. And if you're not, well, then you've caught a lot of luck. And he didn't exactly catch luck. He saved the fuel needed and managed to get to the line first. His next win in 2018, a very controversial one, I'll admit, where Eric Almirola was spun off the three's bumper, and it was definitely an overaggressive move by the three, but when you look at it, Austin Dillon got his second win then in another crown jewel race. So, two of NASCAR's biggest moments, and Austin Dillon comes up big in them. Then you look at 2020, he had the two-tire stop with his teammate Tyler Reddick at Texas, and with that, finished with the win and leading 22 laps in that race. A lot of that can be attributed to the 550 package, but he didn't screw up like other drivers have in the past at this package. So that's another one. And then of course, last year. Last year, he managed to survive the rain wreck at the end of the Daytona race to cut off for the playoffs. With that, he got a clutch win, won the race leading 10 laps, and managed to get an 11th hour qualification into the 2022 playoffs. So when you look at these wins, three of them are in big moments, whether qualifying for the playoffs at the last possible minute or winning a crown jewel race. Not to say that they're completely off talent, but it is showing that Austin Dillon can come up clutch when it matters. Now, let's compare him in the last three years to Tyler Reddick. In this instance, many see Tyler Reddick as being the next superstar of NASCAR, a driver who is going to rewrite the history books if he's just given a good opportunity, like possibly what he has at 2311. Well, in 2022, let's be real, Tyler Reddick completely blew the three cars team out of the water when it came to more wins, double the top fives, and more top tens as well. But Austin Dillon managed to take care of his car a bit more, keeping it on track for almost 200 more laps than Reddick did. Now, while he didn't lead many laps, that also led him to have a by 1.1 higher average finish on the season as well. 
The eight DNFs is the same as Reddick, and that can also be attributed to the new car and the chaos that was provided by it. In 2021, he had a higher average finish again than Tyler Reddick. And while he didn't match him in any statistical categories for the most part, it shows that Reddick was definitely more hit or miss. You either got a top 10, top 5, or a win out of him, or you got a wreck. And in 2020, Austin Dillon did have better numbers in wins and top fives than the eight car did, and he also completed about the same amount of laps. But he did lead more laps than Reddick in that season. And the average finish, again, was higher than the eight team. And that's something you need to look at here. In the same equipment, on average, Austin Dillon actually finished higher than Tyler Reddick did. He kept care of his equipment more. He was generally that 8th to 15th place guy, which is not a bad driver whatsoever. And when you look in 2022, for instance, at other drivers comparable to him, he had the same amount of top fives as William Byron, Austin Cindric, and Bubba Wallace, and with William Byron, had the same amount of top tens. He had more top fives than Alex Bowman, Eric Jones, and Martin Truex Jr. last year, and more top tens than Chase Briscoe, Austin Cindric, Bubba Wallace, and Chris Buescher. All those drivers are drivers who have been looked at either in the past as really good, like Truex, or like a lot of these younger guys, as up-and-coming drivers who are going to explode on the scene or already have. Austin Dillon kept up with all of those playoff-caliber drivers. And not playoff-caliber because they won, but because they are good enough to get in the top 10 to 15 in points. When you look at his best tracks, for instance, four of the top five best tracks on average for Austin Dillon are high-skill tracks. There's two worn out intermediates that you have to be a really good driver and drive on the edge the entire time for, especially with this car, Homestead and Auto Club. With those, he has an 11.6 average at Homestead and a 13.5 at Auto Club. He has three top 10s in the top five at both those tracks. And other than one race, he has finished in the top 15 at every one of his Homestead starts. What are the other two tracks that he's raced really, really well at? Well, Darlington, another unique worn out track that takes a lot of driver skill he has a 12th place average there which was one of the best in the sport what's his best average track coda a road course in his two starts he's finished in the top 20 in both and had a top 10 so i'm just gonna say this right now when it comes to biggest moments or tracks that take a lot of talent austin dillon shows up it's not a bad driver to show up at those types of tracks and races if you look at his overall career too, he is a four-time Cup Series winner. Ties him with guys like Christopher Bell, William Byron, Bobby Hamilton, Joe Nemechek, and Michael Waltrip. When you look at his Xfinity career, he's a 2013 champion. He has nine wins, which ties him with Jones, Tyler Reddick, and David Green, three great Xfinity drivers. When you look at his truck career, he's the 2011 champion, a seven-time winner in the series, tied with Jones again, as well as Bell again, and Mark Martin and Zane Smith. Four very good drivers and very good truck series drivers at that. So overall, when it comes to his performance in his career, he is a solid driver, and for that reason at least, doesn't deserve the hate he gets. Now, let's look at some of the other intangibles, for instance. Driving the three car, he's going to get some hate, because he is the follow-up to Dale Earnhardt, and if you want to talk about it too, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in a couple instances as well. And many see him as not deserving. Well, Richard Childress has said that he has saved that number for the Childress family, which he is the grandson of Childress, as well as the Earnhardt family. And he's gotten Dale Jr.'s approval, and he's been in the number for 10 years. At this point, if people are still mad about it, they just got to accept that this is reality. He's not done very bad in that car. There's plenty of drivers who would have been worse. He's performed better than his brother would have in the car as well. And it seems like he has, over time, been getting better and better. He also is partially responsible for RCR signing Kyle Busch, which could put RCR completely back on the map again. He pushed Childress to sign Busch, and in my opinion, he will really capitalize on the knowledge that Kyle brings over to the team, where they haven't had a really elite-level driver in about a decade since Kevin Harvick used to race there. Now, I know people aren't going to like him as well because they see him as spoon-fed, but overall, Dylan is never going to be a championship contender, but with the equipment he's had, he has performed admirably. He is not the best overall driver. He is maybe not even a top 12 driver, but he's a solid driver year in and year out who will represent the three car and RCR in the playoffs. And in my opinion, is probably NASCAR's most overhated driver. Now with that, I wanna pass it on to you and ask you, what are your thoughts on Austin Dillon? Let me know down in the comments below. 
While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. To all my channel members, thank you for your support on this channel. It has helped a ton. And until next time, have a good one.